Hi everyone and welcome to Tap Into Your Creativity. We, um, I am so excited today. We have Sally Cooper joining us and joining us really soon here. Hopefully, um, Sally, just accept the invitation and we should be good to go. And there she is. Hey. <laughs> You did. Thank you for those great instructions. I'm so proud of you. Oh my gosh. Right? That was my biggest fear. <laughs> Just connecting. You did it. You did it. I'm so excited. Before we get started, I just want to say tapping to your creativity is still alive and still thriving. And I just have taken some time for myself. I've been painting and going back to my roots and um i needed that time and i still do so um that's why i'm not here every week like i used to be um but uh tapping to your creativity um will still be and because i've had a lot of questions of you guys if i was gonna be done or if i was coming back so i am back today i'm not sure when um the next interview will be but like i said i'm just taking some time for myself but today um, it's a treat because we have Sally Cooper joining us all the way from um, uh, Fort Lauderdale, right? Right, just, or just outside just of Fort Lauderdale. Outside. And um, I'm so excited. Thank you so much for joining my Army of Artists. Like I've always said, I couldn't do this program without you guys. And um, so welcome. Well, first, I, I want to thank you for inviting me. And you're just doing a phenomenal job. I mean, feeding more than 350,000 meals, you know, raising more than 50, 350,000 meals. And I'm glad to be a part of that. And uh, later, I guess we'll show the little painting that I created. And hopefully somebody will want to contribute towards that. Yes. yes. So uh, 100%. whenever you're ready. And uh, <laughs> I, you know, like, uh, like I said, this program started uh, back in COVID times. Um, more than three years ago, I can't even believe it. And um, and we'll talk a little bit about that later on. But um, I am, um, as people are joining us, thank you for joining us. I'm going to turn off the comments so they can actually see your face. And then I'm going to turn on the comments um, when we're almost done with the interview for questions and comments. Um, so um, don't worry. We know that you're there. I'm just going to Turn them off so you can see Sally's beautiful face. And here we go. So, Sally, let's start from uh, from the beginning, I guess. Where did you grow up and uh, how did you start uh, getting creative? Well, actually, I grew up in the inner city of Cleveland. And uh, my parents were married very young. So, uh, you know, we, we didn't have much. And but I was very fortunate. Um, the um, the area that I grew up was mostly people from Europe and a lot of people from a lot of Slovenians. And they were always, the women were always cooking and they were always doing needlework and doing uh, some sort of artistic thing. So I love that. And it was a great neighborhood to grow up in. Uh, make, I'm just gonna fast forward. Uh, I actually um, got married in, 1974 and moved to uh, South Florida. And there was not much here at that time. Now everybody's here. <laughs> but also a lot of opportunity that came my way. And uh, I attended, uh, I, I actually was working for lawyers. I was a paralegal. And uh, I was going to school uh, at the community college. I took every course there was to take in art and uh, and even at the other colleges. So, I mean, I've been on a constant learning uh, journey. And um, in that, that course, in the course of my journey, I, I met some fabulous people that I think were really uh, inspirational to me. One was uh, a teacher that I had in Fort Lauderdale. There was a group of artists that still was meeting up until this point, and she passed away recently. Uh, her name was Diane Nance, and uh, we would meet at her home once a week and, you know, to, uh, do artwork. At that time, I was doing watercolors, not really acrylic. This was back in uh, 1980. And the other 
thing uh, was one of the teachers who was a department head at the college. Uh, I did independent studies with her. Uh, and also I took a workshop with Miles Bat, and he was a sign painter that actually published his own book and his work was on creative watercolor. And uh, at that point, it moved me from a traditional watercolor into something, you know, that people weren't doing at the time. Like, you know, with traditional watercolor, you wanted everything to be just perfect. Well, he was putting blurb, you know, dropping water into his paint and uh, alcohol and different things. So that, I just, was blown away. I thought, oh my God, I gotta, I gotta do more of this. And uh, my teacher, Diane Nance, had an abstract that she did. And I thought, I said, I wanna do that. I wanna do abstract. I don't wanna do detailed drawings, you know, and tracing the drawing back onto the watercolor paper and, and taking so much time. I just wanted to do things that were more spontaneous. So uh, I uh, kind of started working on my own in my garage. I've been in this house for 32 years, so. So you started working on in your garage while you were doing Paralegan at the same time? Yes, I was, uh, actually, I wasn't working at that time and I started, my son, I had my son, and so uh, I was painting in my garage, which wasn't air conditioned or anything, so I'd have the doors open and uh, maybe when my son was at school or whatever, you know, so I would be painting. And uh, I don't think acrylics were really big at that time, like in the 80s and 90s, you know, but they've become now very popular. And um, when I went to Jerry's, they handed me this uh, sample of uh, acrylic glazing liquid, and I started using that, and that was, that was a beautiful product back in the time because that allowed me to do glazes. And just, you know, just in the process of... Um, you know, just my journey, meeting different people that uh, influenced me and joining art groups. Uh, I had joined um, an art group. It was the Boca Museum Artists Guild. There were a lot of professional artists there and they, there was a cooperative gallery. So that got me started into thinking more about selling my work, which I did through that cooperative gallery. And, um, and the art groups, uh, you know, entering different competitions and uh, all those little steps, you know, bring you to where you are, wherever you are. <laughs> so, so, so uh, well, do you, do you think that you would have done the same thing uh, now than back then to find your community of people and, and to start looking for galleries to, to sell? Would you say that to your, to your younger self, that that's what you would, you would do in order to take that bigger step and, and be more, I guess, professional in, in your journey? Definitely. I mean, I think today, uh, if I compared the times, you know, like the 60s and 70s and 80s versus today, I mean, we have everything at our fingertips with uh, the social media, Instagram, uh, students from all over the world, uh, information from all over the world. I, we just didn't have this back then. And um, I think one of the, one of the problems that uh, has probably been corrected is that most people were not directed to go into the field of art. It was, oh, you can't make a living, uh, you know, you can't do this. And, and I think in today's world, if you really want to do that you can do it I mean you can do just about anything you put your mind to do it's just how big do you want to get you know how uh, where do you want to take this and actually I was working for a lawyer who uh, he felt like that a lot you know and, and back in the 70s he did um, a training out of California the est training and uh, which was real big out of California and I actually took that training too and it was kind of like that, that same kind of thing, you know, having a support group, uh, people behind you. Um, so I think all, all those things are really important for artists. You know, if you're just starting out, get, join, uh, you know, join uh, art groups, 
uh, get your work out there, start, uh, you know, showing your work and, you know, do it locally and then do it, uh, you know, regionally, then do it nationally and internationally. Uh, you can do all that and get your name out there. And we'll talk, talk about that, um, I think, more at the end, because I do want to pick your brain on how to. Um, okay. I think it's important, to, to, you know, to go to how to. But let's go back and um, talk about, um, because you became really a master in watercolor um, at that time. And, um, and then, like you said, you started to introduce some of the acrylic that came in. And so at what time or what point in your life you were like, okay, I have enough knowledge with this material now. And I, um, were you, did you start by being very representational in your work? Because now you're more non-objective painter, um, abstract. So did you make a transition and how did that work for you? Well, um, my transition came when, uh, like I said, when I saw the teacher at the little critique group every week and there was an abstract that she did and I said, I want to do that. And uh, so then I started taking different workshops. Uh, I had taken a workshop with Stephen Quiller, although he is not uh, totally abstract. I wanted to learn about color. He's a fabulous colorist. And I have a lot of his books. If you're interested in color, look up Stephen Quiller. Um, I also took, you know, all over the place. I took a workshop with Fran Larson out in Santa Fe. Uh, this is, you know, going back some time. Um, uh, just different people, you know. Um, and then just practicing. I think the main thing is just doing the work. You've got to do a lot of work and you just got to just be at it all the time. And uh, if it's something that you want to do, it'll happen. Um, oh, another thing I did was uh, with this other critique group that I belonged to, one of my friends came over one day. This was back in 2003. And she was entering the artist magazine competition. And I thought, well, maybe I'll enter that. And, at that time, we had to have slides. Everything was done by slide. We had to submit a slide. Now, this was the last day that I could submit something. So I submitted a slide, and I won first place in the Artist Magazine competition. Now, this is out of, out of uh, 10,000 people. And so this, this was another thing that really boosted my confidence. And just different things like this. So like I will talk about later, encouraging everyone if you're interested, just do it and don't be afraid to do it, you know? And I'm sure uh, you, you, um, you obviously uh, talk about this uh, because you now are a teacher and um, we will talk about your workshops and you probably talk more about in that on how you can really find your voice and, you know, all of that. And we'll talk about your workshop um, a little later on. But um, I think that, um, you were pretty young at the time where you found your own voice, I think. Um, and like you said, it was a lot of trial and error, but um, have you changed much since then? Uh, yeah, I definitely, I would say, because um, there's a painting that I had won second place in the artist magazine. And I remember doing the painting, it was very, uh, very geometric, more geometric. And I had this line that I just had like this little squiggle line. And for me, that was a big deal. <laughs> I think about it today and I'm like all over the place, you know, lines and throwing paint. And so, yeah, definitely has changed. And, uh, and I think anybody that uh, it, it'll change for everybody because we're not, uh, we're not static, you know, we're constantly, moving and we're constantly growing and we're constantly you know things coming our way and and it's a wonderful thing thank god yes you know yes yes so, i was recently on a workshop and um you know the the conversation of moving your lane um you know is that okay to you know to exercise many different ways to paint at the same time and follow those different lanes and so I'm interested in what you have to say about that. Yeah, well, I've always been interested in, uh, in experimenting with different things. 
so um, you know whether uh, you know it's throwing paint on the canvas or working flat and creating maybe like a float that I would put over some uh, darker color to get a granular effect or whatever it is. Um, you know, and I've tried different um, textural things. I'm not, I, I use a little bit of texture, not too much texture for me anyway. Uh, but that's fine if that's what you like. So, um, yeah, definitely always experimenting because it's fun, you know? <laughs> it, uh, it keeps things interesting. Yes, 100%. And um, do you, when was the, the time that you thought, um, okay, I'm a professional artist now, and I think I can take the leap of faith to start teaching? Uh, well, what happened with that was uh, I was teaching, was I teaching? No, I had won that artist magazine competition that first place, and um, I, I was uh, very connected with the Coral uh, Springs Museum here in uh, not too far from where I live. And they asked me if I wanted to teach a workshop. Oh, they gave me a little, show. They, what they did was they gave me a, a, a show. They had shown my painting that I won and, you know, I, I had some paintings uh, hanging in the museum. And uh, the director of education asked me if I wanted to teach a workshop. Well, I had never taught a workshop, but I'm the type that I hate to say no to anything because you don't know where something's going to take you, you know. And I felt that I could do it. Um, I had pretty good at organizational skills and I put together a workshop and that was the first workshop what, what, that I taught. This? What, what year is this? It was abstract. No, what, what year? Oh, what year? That was um, 2006. Okay. okay. And so then I began teaching at the Coral Springs Museum and I taught there for a while and then uh, they asked me to teach in, uh, at the old school in Delray and I taught there for a number of years uh, up until COVID. And in fact, I was uh, I had a lot of classes at the um, at the old school in Delray, and most of them would get filled. So people were always on the wait list. And I also taught a large scale workshop where I could have 13 people in a gymnasium where they set up the whole room. Each person had a wall, they had a six foot table. And they had an easel, and uh, I was teaching these workshops for a while until COVID. In fact, my last workshop was March, and that's when everything closed with COVID in 2020. Wow! And, and the school, uh, the reason I started teaching online was because the school, of course, had to close, and they asked me. I got a phone call. She goes, "Would you want to teach on Zoom?" And inside it was thinking, oh my God, I don't know. And of course I said yes. <laughs> A glutton for punishment. And um, I taught for the school for uh, a couple of years. And then what happened was there was some kind of politics within the city and they closed old school square. And it's still closed at other than not, uh, the museum is not closed and they're working on reopening it. So I continued to teach um, online. And so that's where I am today. And um, did you find it difficult to to connect with people on Zoom? No, actually, it was very exciting. I mean, I thought, for me, I thought it really went quite well. Now, I have a friend who's my assistant. So uh, what happens with my classes is that each class is recorded and so right when I'm ready, the, it's, my class is two hours. So the first hour I teach and demonstrate and the second hour the students paint and I'm able to bring up their paintings or whatever they have questions on and we can talk about it. But while, while, the, while I'm teaching, we're recording it. So the, the students can chat, you know, use the chat to ask questions. And then my assistant will say, well, so-and-so wants to know, you know, blah, 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 or whatever. And I'll answer the questions as I'm uh, demonstrating. And that, I feel, works out very well, you know. Oh, that, that's really um, 
fantastic that you weren't afraid because I, I, you know, I think that, like you said, I think when we get out of our comfort zone, it's when the magic really happens. Yeah. And in, you know, for you to say yes to all these things, this is where the magic happens. Cause you would have probably never thought that you would be here today teaching on zoom students all over the world. Like the possibilities are really endless. Absolutely. And I really feel blessed because um, at this point in my life, this is, you know, this is a wonderful thing for me. I mean, it's enjoyable. I enjoy uh, being with others, helping others, uh, you know, giving them information, uh, sharing information, sharing my journey. It's, it's really not a problem. I, I, uh, I really find a lot of joy from this. And, uh, and it expands my world, even though I'm like in, <laughs> in my little studio. <laughs> but well, it, it's, great. it's the perfect segue right now, uh, yeah. since you mentioned, mentioned your studio. Um, Sally, please grab your phone and, and switch the camera around and, and take us on a little tour of your studio. I'm super excited about that. Right so, now, um, switch this you, around. You, Let me see. I got my little arrows in the oh, yeah, I see it. Screen. Yep, I see it. Okay. Great. Wait a minute. There okay. we go. Perfect. Right, I'm going to move this over here for the when I demonstrate. Yep. Um, Great. Okay, so uh, first off, um, this is or this was a three car garage, and oh. my husband and I had talked about building a separate building. But when we spoke to the architect, he said, "Well, why don't you just change the garage?" you know, into a studio. And, uh, and then my husband built a garage for he has a little car collection. So uh, on this wall, I, I put some of my art that you know, we can uh, talk about where I'm at as far as that goes. Yes, please. And um, when I teach, I have this painting wall. Although any of these walls, I at one point, I had students coming here and I had these walls where I had my paintings they actually were places where people could paint. So I had students painting here. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> and um, let's see, uh, I have a desk area set up with my computer. Uh, that really works out nicely for you. Yeah, wow. I had a storage. So all my storage is, you know, uh, I have drawers so for- uh, and clean, wow. Well, I did straighten up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want you to do that, Tally. I wanted to, you to show us exactly who you are. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, so anyway, so I could have all my paints here. Um, my large works of, uh, oh, I have uh, rolled canvases that uh, are finished or in the process. I actually have a storage room where I have many more of these. Okay. So do you, these uh, do you canvases. Store them, um, do you store them um, rolled then, or do you stretch them, or how do you, what's the best? Uh, well, what I do is, um, because I have so many canvases, and so I'm teaching, and I've got a lot of things going on, and even my own work, uh, what I do is I, I take a canvas, and I try to get an insert, I don't know if you could see this here, like, you know, whether it's at Joanne Fabrics or whatever, and, you know, get one of these inserts or go to Home Depot and, and wrap the canvas with the outside, Facing you know, yeah. Uh, the, yeah, the, the original, the, the artwork showing on the outside. Yeah. And um, I get the whole thing ready. So if I wanted, uh, and I, I have artworks, art, you know, the archives. Yeah. Uh, so I have this listed for myself. And if somebody is interested in it, then I know that this painting is ready to be stretched. Got and it. then I can stretch it. As far as uh, stretching, I, I could stretch up to 40 by 40. Do you and, stretch uh, it yourself or you Oh, yeah, it's, 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 it's easy. You can stretch a canvas up to 40 by 40 without having a crossbar. Okay. In fact, I just stretched this one uh, just the other day. Now, this was this was one I had on a roll. This was actually a demo in my class oh, wow. that I didn't did in the first hour. Okay, so uh, and I love the just, mark making and the you know like the movement of that piece. Yeah, and wow, and I didn't go back into it. This was the way it was done, and that was it. I let it go. You know, let it go. 
yeah. just let it go. And, uh, and I think when you paint a lot and you've got a lot of stuff going on, you're not so worried about, oh my God, this is so precious. Right. You know? Exactly. exactly. So um, I've got actually two sides for all the storage over here and drawers. So with just with different things. Wow. So basically, yeah. And I think it helps to be organized. You know, um, yeah. We had added uh, we had added a bathroom to this, so you know, there's a if I have people, you have you have your sink down there too. Have my sinks. I have a, a little refrigerator here with uh, if I wanted to make coffee. I, I'm not making coffee here anymore, but I did when I had students here. That's. I mean, it turned out amazing, and it looks like, you know, you didn't need that big of a space to have students there. I had a lot of students and on the other side, they were working on the easel. So I had students on the wall or students on the easel, you know, depending on what they were doing. Wow. And then I, this is a separate entry. So I don't have to go through the house. They could actually, you know, just come through this separate entry. Well, this uh, this is a fantastic idea for anyone that, you know, has yeah. a garage on a, uh, wants to, you know, there's so many artists that work on their garage and, and it's a, it's a great place. It's a, it's very, very comfortable. So let's look at your work, Sally. What do you have on the, on the walls? And okay. You, so working towards, uh, towards something? let me say this, say, um, I have been interested in uh, floral abstract floral and I wanted to do this for a while. I did start it some time ago and then I didn't really, uh, I wasn't really doing that much. But then when I went to see the Joan Mitchell exhibit in Baltimore, uh, actually I saw a Joan Mitchell painting when I went to New York and I think it was in 2017. And to see her work in person is totally different than seeing it in a book. So I was very inspired by Joan Mitchell. And uh, paintings here I'm working on a floral type series. I don't want to get too, I want it to be more abstract. So, uh, you know, using the mark making and uh, actually putting this flat too and doing like I was talking about a float where you have a granular effect. So this is working uh, on the wall and also working flat. So trying different things, you know. And there is uh, some texture, little texture, but not overloaded, you know. Uh, just yeah. from all the and layers. Yeah, we'll talk about your materials, but um, yeah. it it sure look is it a mixed media then or? Oh, def just definitely, mm -hmm. definitely um, a mix. Like I like to use these uh, woodies, but I find that sometimes they're not they don't have enough punch. So I've been using the water uh, soluble oil pastels. How now, do you like is, them? I like them a lot. Um, this is the, they're very cheap too. This is the Mungyo, I think they call it. But this one I just found on Amazon and I like the variety of colors. So this is the, uh, and it wasn't expensive, the Montmartre water soluble oil pastels. Now, years ago, I used to use oil pastel with my acrylic and that was a mistake because I had a small work in a gallery and I noticed that the oil pastel, I didn't use that much, but a little bit of it was coming off of the, uh, the work. Oh. So what so I, that, I just feel I, more comfortable. The, the, the sommelier, you know, the, the oil at the end sometimes, and I've never really had a problem, um, but I don't mix it with the acrylic. I wait until the acrylic is, you know, until the painting is done, and then I could add no. some. Well, no, I, I agree with you, and that's what I did. I didn't mix it with the acrylic. But going back, now this is going back to, say, 2006, I noticed oh, that the mark that I put on the painting when I got it back from them wasn't as strong as when I had originally put it on. So I think what happens is it flakes off. Because you can't seal that. Right. I mean, you can seal the water soluble, right. but you can't seal the oil right. i don't think you i know? think um if you i've used like hairspray <laughs> and uh that has helped so tip of the day <laughs> well anyways if you like try these because they're really fabulous uh yeah yes and the colors 
Yes. Wow. Look at yes, that's yeah. what I like about it. You've got a really uh, beautiful assortment of color here. Now, I also use the Neo Color 2. Uh, those are water soluble. And I've got a lot of those in grays. And so what uh, we're going to do, Sally, is at the end of this uh, interview, you're going to send me all this information so I can put it out there for people that um, are wondering what these are and where they can get them. So don't worry, yeah. guys. We'll, we'll post that. Now, um, so, I wanted, Sally, are you, are you going back to the work on the wall? Are you working for a specific um, commission right now? Or are you just working? No, um, this was going to be a demo today. No, no, no. I mean, the the large work that you have, the floral abstract. Oh, are this is, uh, well, this is what I want to work on. So this these are what I want to work on. It's not any specific commission oh. or anything. This is just what I want to do. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, they, they look, I mean, this is very exciting. You yeah. Uh, you always have to look for something that excites you. So, um or, you know, like you said, get inspired by someone and then start just painting to paint, not for a particular reason. Right. Uh, yeah, I think it's important. And also uh, with flowers, there's so many colors, you know, so uh, you could really go crazy. Right. Um, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, so let's, uh, let's do the demo now. I'm excited. These were like small. Um, oh, is that work, work on paper? These wow. are these are work on canvas. Oh. So when oh. I do my demos and classes, you know, just different things that we work on, um, you know, uh, uh, different mark making, or I mean, there's a lot of stuff here. Wow. Or maybe we're talking about um, more minimalist type work, you know. So we'll maybe do something like that or just doing different things. So I just want to show you, there's a stack of stuff here. Wow. You know? I love your mark making. It's, it's very strong, yet you have your own little language layer. I, I love that. Thank you. Now, another thing we do in the class, and I do on my own too, is works on paper. So these I've done on um, squares. Is that Stonehenge, um, or what, what kind of paper do you use? Actually, this is just the Canton paper, 140-pound paper that you get in a pad. Yep. You can get it at Michael's. Sometimes they have buy one, get one free. Now, if you do want to work, uh, I mean, I recommend this for those that really just want to do a lot of work, you know, and, and just have fun with it. And what I do is I tape off, you know, yep. the edges. And then when I'm finished with the painting, take the tape off, and you've got this beautiful, uh, clean edge. Do you um, use a gesso for them to start, or not necessarily? Yes. Uh, in fact, if you go on my, uh, on my profile page, I have a demo on there of how I prepare the papers, uh, showing how I prepare uh, the paper with gesso. Okay. And, uh, and also the tape. And also, we do do collage work and some ascetic writing. And so uh, here again, you know, using collage, uh, pencil work, and, and what really works beautifully on paper is those pencil, the, you know, the watercolor pencils. So yeah. if, it's if, such a different, um, you know, it, it absorbs so different from canvas to paper. And there's something to say about working on paper. Exactly. So I wanted to share that. I love it. Now, here's a two canvases where I'm working, uh, you know, flat. I'm working on the easel and then flat and putting in some of that float that I told you about, you know, just some white float. And can, what can I'll you, do sometimes. Can you describe the white float and how do you use it or why you're using it? Well, because I happen to like this granular effect. So what you want to do is you want to mix a little bit of your white, your titanium white, and I use some distilled water, just put a little bit of water in it, and then just keep this flat, and then just do like maybe, you know, take your brush, let me get a brush so like an example. So if I had dipped this in a, dipped this in a brush and just 
float, you know, just float it because it's going to be very watery. Yeah. And what will happen when it dries, you'll be able to see through some of the areas, you know. Now, you can remove what you don't want, but it, right. it's really a nice effect. Yeah, because it, it makes um, almost like an illusion. Exactly. There, there, like it, a mist. It, yeah. It gets, and so you're going to have a combination. And the best thing for artwork is to have a combination of uh, transparent, uh, translucent, and opaque. So this, you know, it, it'll be next to a an opaque area, and then maybe a translucent area, and then you know, just have that variety within your work, and it makes it super interesting. Yes, yes, a hundred percent. So I wanted to show you that. We need to, we need to start the um, your demo. Okay, so I'm going to put you on the uh, tripod again. Yeah. Yep. There we go. Um, we're going to have to move it a little bit. Nope, to the other side. Nope, the other side. The other side? Yep. There Wait we go. Is yeah. that clear? It's clear. Does it need to be raised? No. Okay. I think you're good. Okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to put out, and maybe I can, you know, let me, um, will you be able to see the, the table there? Can you see the table? I just see the, the table. I don't see the canvas though. Right, right. I will, but I'm going to show you the paints that I'm putting okay. out. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to put out a triad of colors. Now a triad are three colors that are equally distant on the color wheel. So I'm going to have a, a blue, a yellow, and a red. Do you like no. using fluid? What's that? Do you like using the fluid golden? Well, the reason I'm starting with this is I use all different kind of paints, but the reason I'm starting with this is because these are uh, uh, transparent yeah okay yeah and these are also true colors so nothing has been mixed with them you don't have a powder blue you don't you know so these are the true colors that I if I start mixing with them they're going to change but initially I've got my transparent colors that are true colors okay all right and um, I'm going to start and the other thing I like to do is I like to I'm, I'm making this simple today. So I'm just going to have three colors and um, I like to use raw umber. Yep. We love and that raw umber. I put my white separate and I also put my glazing liquid separate. So I've got my acrylic glazing liquid and I mark my plate because they're so similar to the white. The, the glazing liquid. Now there's one other a product. I mean, there's a lot of different products that I use, but one that I wanted to share with everybody today that is a, for me, it was such a wonderful discovery. And that is the Atelier Interactive Artist Acrylic, the Toning Gray Mid. Now this is a toning gray that if you want to take the edge off of your screaming color, you add some of this, and it, it really is wonderful. So okay. we're um, gonna li we're gonna list all this. Thing, so don't worry about it. I'm sure you're wondering what is it. Can you tell me again what the name is? What was we that? We'll uh, make sure that we'll take a picture and. Uh, oh, definitely, and, uh, definitely. So yeah. I'm gonna put some of this out. I don't know how much I'm gonna use today, but really, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna activate that canvas. Okay. And okay. I'm right. gonna show you one way to activate it. Now, there are many ways, uh, you know, we could do uh, automatic drawing, which I'm not going to do today because a lot of people do that. And I'm going to just show you something maybe a little different. And I'm going to put my gloves on because uh, I like to, my nails are a mess, but I still don't, you know, <laughs> want to have that paint all over the place. So this is, this is how I set this up. I usually, I have my, um, 
My setup every time is generally I have this uh, piece of ADHP, which is a uh, material that I cover. I mean, you could actually paint on this and then just scrape it off, but it's easier for me if I want to create a paint skin or whatever. Yeah. I put my colors on this side and my, my neutrals on this side. Okay. And uh, this, this is um, the, uh, let's see, the, uh, what do they call it? Freezer paper. Okay. So I'm using the freezer paper for that, which you can let that dry and then you can create a paint skin out of that. So now I'm going to move you to this. Perfect. Oops. <laughs> I think Sally left us. Hold on, guys. Um, I'm going to request um, Sally to join me, hopefully. Um, okay, Sally, I just invited you back. Um, so just, um, hopefully you can, oh, there we are. Okay. What happened, but <laughs> we lost you there for a minute. I think you got okay. disconnected. But... Now, can you see this? The... Uh, yeah, you have to move it a little bit to your, there we go. Right there. Perfect. All right. That's it. Perfect. Okay. So what I'm going to do is in this process I'm going to use a bowl scraper okay all right and I'm going to start with my marks I have this art graph and I can also use uh, this is a colored art graph that happens to be uh, like a raw sienna ochre it's ochre and I'm going to just apply some marks without really thinking about what I'm doing okay so I'm just going to there. Now I could actually take uh, two things in my hand if I wanted to. Now, I forgot to tell you that I prepared this canvas by putting a light coat of yellow on it. Yeah, you can. Okay, that is what they call an underpainting. And an underpainting helps to unify your whole work, all right? And one of the reasons for starting with uh, transparent colors is because that underpainting, if I had painted it a dark color, it's gonna affect my colors. If I had painted a blue, if I start putting another color on it, it's going to affect that color. But starting with a light yellow, if I put a blue on it, it's going to change maybe to a light green. Right. You see, so it's going to be like a glaze. And that is pretty important, you know. And I'm not really concerned about what is on here. I'm just going to get some markings so that I have something to work with. This is giving me some information. I love how you use your whole body, you know. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some, a little bit of glaze on here. So it's bringing out some of that. It also, it locks it in place and it brings it to life. So you can see the difference where Sally is putting the, the glaze on top of it. it yeah, does, I'm just, yeah, I could put, I could have put a uh, gloss medium. Yep. I just happen to have the glaze. Yeah. So now you can see where I put all those marks. Yeah. So now I'm going to, I'm going to um, mix up a little color quickly. So the activation of the canvas is like your raw gut just telling you just don't think and just do. Right. So I'm adding some color.
And um, Sally, do you, um, you mix the color on the canvas or are you mixing it on the plate or where? I'm actually, I'm mixing it, I'm mixing it both ways. I'm mixing it on my palette and I'm mixing it also on the uh, canvas. And what this does is just, this allows me to get some interesting things happening, you know, some scrapings and now, if I, I add a little bit of raw umber to this color. Do you use your glazing with raw umber as well? Yes, I, I use raw umber. So let's see, I add, which creates a darker green. It's so satisfying to see you painting right now. <laughs> and so this is giving me different things to work with. This is activating the canvas. And you're not, and she hasn't even picked up a brush. So this is literally just activating the painting. And right. Actually, the brush will give a totally different effect. Well, that and but that, that's also what we we want because this is using it, um, you know, with different brush strokes. So you're going to see the thickness of it, and just, you know, when you start using brushes, then you know it it will give you a different mark. Exactly. So is. Is this how you work when you are um, doing your demos in your in your Zoom classes? Uh, it could be one of the ways. Mm -hmm. So now, when you pick up a brush, so say if it's a long handled brush or whatever, it's going to give you a different, a totally different effect. Yes, especially because you have the medium there, so. Yeah. Now, whatever I don't like, I can cover up. Yeah, exactly. And so it's, it's is, just a, is, that, a is, that, is that raw umber, umber that you're using? That's raw umber, yeah. Mixed okay. with a little color. So I have a variety of line. I have these thin lines and I have uh, thicker lines that are coming through with this uh, uh, brush. And one of the things I wanted to share was one of my favorite brushes uh, is uh, actually a watercolor brush. So these are synthetic brushes and uh, you'll see the difference now when I start going in with uh, The synthetic, the synthetic brush that you're using, um, do you buy it at Home Depot or where do you get no, it? No, 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 this brush, this is a watercolor brush that I get at Jerry's. I ordered from Jerry's Artorama. Okay. Now, if I use my glazing liquid with this, now see, once this is dry, then you can come over with the glaze and you can be able to see what's underneath. So what now you're taking, you're taking out, you're editing. Editing, right. I got to get some more paint out. And that, that's how you get also the quiet versus the chaotic versus right. the loud. You know, we want all those conversations happening. Right. right. But the brush will give you a totally different look. Yeah. So what I, I like the combination of all these other little things within the paint, you know, so yeah. uh, depending on what you're doing. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it just, and, you know, this, this whole conversation already, you, and you can respond to what you have. Right. And I can go into different colors. I could go into more yellow if I wanted to, yeah. or maybe yeah. push it to an orange or a red or whatever. Yes. So, well, thank you. 
Sally. Let's um now I need you to go back and sit down and I'm gonna turn back um some uh we're gonna actually before we do that, if you have uh the peas that we're donating today. Oh yeah. Um, well that you are donating um to Feeding America, we're asking um two hundred and fifty dollars for Sally's um painting. Um, and you will get an amazing, gorgeous piece of artwork from Sally. And at the same time, you will be helping um, people in need of food. Um, you know, we are in a crisis and we have been in a crisis. And so the more we uh, can help as a community of artists and as human beings, um, the more I, I'm hoping that the, the, this world can be a little better. So, um, Sally made this piece um, that is a 10 by 10. Is that correct, Sally? Right. And um, we're asking $250. Um, so if you're interested in this piece, please DM me or Sally and we'll uh, let you know how it works. But it's super easy. You make your donation directly into Feeding America and uh, you will send us a receipt and Sally will then send the piece out to you guys. So I'm really hoping that um, you guys will will help us out today. And um, so I'm opening up um, our panel here for questions. And um, so if you have any questions for Sally, this is the right time to, to ask, don't be afraid. And um, Sally, so tell us a little bit about, um, you know, give us some tips especially for you know for artists that are really um very uh thinking about, about moving forward in in and being a, a painter and an artist um what would you tell them to do like how do they how do they apply to galleries or how important is social media or what what do you think well I think social media, I mean, I'm fairly new to social media just uh, before the pandemic, but I actually had students that were really involved in social media and I thought, oh, I don't know, but I should have really joined a long time ago because uh, there is so much information that, uh, that you're getting from social media. I mean, I don't know if you could read that much in a book, you know, uh, in one day, you can go, there's, it's just so much out there and I would practice. If you really, really uh, want to uh, make it, just practice and don't give up. Don't, uh, don't take uh, no for an answer, just keep, just keep doing it. And that's one of the important things I think about uh, if you uh, enter these competitions, like even like the local competitions first, you're gonna get, um, when you start winning awards, that's going to give you confidence in yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, if you'll know that if your work, uh, that people like your work by, uh, by you know, the comments that you get uh, and that kind of a thing. So I think that's pretty important. So we have a, a question here from Rebecca. How much paint does that you have ready to paint on your large canvases? You know, it doesn't take as much as you think. You know, when I first started to, uh, start painting on, uh, I wanted to paint a large canvas. The large canvas that I first started on was like 84 by 65. I mean, it was huge. I had it made, I had them make it at a frame shop and I still have it in my family room. But um, you don't need, need giant jars of uh, paint, you know? So you could keep it, you'd be surprised how, especially if you're starting with these paints that are true colors, you know? Yes. Uh, and, and professional paint. You don't really need it. Uh, you could start with a small bottle. You'd be surprised, you know? Yeah. You don't, uh, you don't have to buy giant jars. So if you don't have a really big budget, what I would recommend is that you start with a triad of colors. Now, I have a triad here of three colors. And what I can do is I could substitute, like if I don't want to use the manganese blue, I could substitute it for a different blue or uh, substitute the red instead of maybe um, quinacridone magenta, maybe I want to do quinacridone red. So always have like your three colors, black, white, and raw umber. And that toning gray I told you about, that's a good one. Yeah. And, um, yes. 
and then you'll have your colors. You don't have to go out and buy tons and tons of color. That could come later, you know? Right. Um, do you know the name of the wide brush you used? The brush? brush? The, the, the watercolor brush? Yes. The white one? Yes, it's, a, it's actually, there's two different kinds that are very similar. One is by Silver White, which would be a, a two inch or a three inch brush, or Creative Mark. Uh, Jerry sells both of those, but Creative Mark is Jerry's brand. Now, sometimes they have those Polar Flow brushes, they call it. The one that, was, that I use today is the Creative Mark Polar Flow. And a lot of times they have them on sale. So if you're really Really interested it's good to have uh, well you could have a one inch a two inch and a three inch and they do have a set you know that they sell so and uh, I just want to would... say Sally you have a lot of groupies here um, <laughs> cheering for you everybody says that you're just such an amazing instructor and mentor and they love you and they love your classes so you should feel very flattered and uh, thank um, you. When is your next, um, when are you starting your next um, Zoom classes and how can people find you and how can they register for them? Okay, uh, my next Zoom class is, uh, it starts on October 19th. It's going to be five weeks. It's $225, which is reasonable, I feel, and it covers the whole five weeks. Plus, you are invited to join a private Facebook page. Uh, where you can post your work and receive comments on the work posted. And also, I, every, every term I have a visiting artist, and uh, you get to attend both the morning class and the afternoon class on the Visiting Artist Day, which is going to be October 26th, and I'm going to have um, uh, Elaine uh, Power, who is an abstract oh. artist. Now, the artists that I have are just phenomenal. You learn so much from Eileen? the visiting artists. Is it Eileen? Eileen Power. Eileen yeah. Power. Eileen yeah. Power. Yes, yes. And, yes. and, and um, you will receive a recording of both of those classes, the morning class where I demonstrate and the afternoon class where Eileen visits us. Yeah. So you get a lot, a lot for your, uh, you know, a lot for your money, I feel. Yeah. Plus, I have a tremendous... Uh, the, the group that I have of students, many have been with me for a long time, they are just so uh, supportive. And uh, so I highly recommend, uh, you know, if, if you want to join a class, try mine, and I think you might really enjoy it. Well, you are a very good communicator, and you're very generous in your Instagram. You show a lot of uh, process and inspirations and um, that says a lot about you and who you are and um, and I, I you know is there anything else that you would want to say before we leave we have a couple more minutes here but yeah there... I wanted to show you uh, I used to be a, a, a teaching rep for chroma atelier paints now this was the one I recommended the the gray and the, the thing about this gray is that this is transparent and that's pretty important you know when you have a transparent then you're not it's not making all your paints opaque so I could actually mix this with a transparent and still it remains transparent wow so, yeah this is really really good oh stuff now you can tone your you can tune your work down also by using the complement or by using um, uh, you know the complementary color or maybe putting a little black in it but i really highly recommend this but they also have uh, a toning gray yellowish and a toning gray pinkish now oh. these two are opaque so they're not transparent but i've used this one if i'm doing say you know the floral type thing and i don't want it to be a screaming magenta i'll put some of this as beautiful neutral you know oh. in with maybe a cream background so and so what, uh, what you're gonna do sally is you're gonna take a pic we're, we're when we're done i'm gonna call you <laughs> and uh you're gonna send me all this and i'm gonna make a story with all the things so everybody has an opportunity to um see the um the brand and everything that you um that you're sharing here with us so nobody misses anything and also um we might have to do a part two sally because yeah. we're on time and oh i um, just want to say one more thing yeah. 
these chroma paints are professional, so they're the even the colors that you get are super beautiful colors. Okay, so I just want to say that. Okay. Uh, no, she doesn't start with a large amount of paint in her palette for the large paintings. As you saw, she had very little amount of paint. Um, and so, um, yeah, that you can see that. So, um, Sally, um, the other thing that I wanted to say is people can find you at sallycooperart.com. .com. And um, again, thank you so, so, so much um for joining my army of artists for being a part of this incredible um community and for your generosity today and every day um i can't wait to share your painting again and i think we might have someone that wants it so uh dm means direct message so direct message me or sally and uh again we're asking 250 dollars for the painting you will help so many people in need Sally, thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you for inviting me. It was All right. great. Thanks, everybody. Have a Bye. good day. Have a great weekend.